I'm excited. Episode 42 of the Drewcast. We're back. Drewcast back. Um, before we get started tonight, guys, I do want to, and tonight, it's, it's daylight behind me, but uh, before we do get started, I do want to say a couple things, nothing major. If you guys support what we do here, and I know a lot of you do, which I'm very grateful for because it's cool to see the amount of support we get us in. But uh, so I noticed that the Drewcast has started to fall down in views. No biggie that happens with YouTube videos. The Say What's Real episodes, though, they tend to get more views than the Drewcast episodes. So if you guys would like to see more See What's Real episodes or even me debating with somebody or just having someone on, please comment. Let me know. I would very much love to hear what you guys think about that. I'm still going to do the Drewcast, but I think my brother's right. I kind of do it a lot, or I tend to do it too much in a row. Like, I'll give you guys two months worth of Drewcast, and I'll... So maybe I got to start, like, switching it up. And I'm cool with switching it up. I'm cool with, like, switching things because this is what I want to do with my life. And I love doing this. I love coming in every week. Because the... there's a lot of people, like, last week when I was a little late, friend messaged me, Hey, bro, where's Melo? Not like get the gun, <laughs> but basically, like it's cool to see that. Like it's cool to see that people still support on that level. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, if you guys want to see more debate stuff, I've been I've been having some other stuff in the works. Like I have a pilot that I want to try out, a pilot for a show with me and uh, my sister in law Lauren. It was it, I wanted to call it the In Laws Podcast, where it's kind of like what Say What's Real does, but we do we talk about more personal things. So we would do like pop culture stuff, right? We would kind of say what's real does. We would talk about like the conspiracy theories, but we would get more personal with like personal beefs or personal stuff that we have with other people. Maybe people would like that more. So if that interests you guys, please let me know. Also, when I look at the YouTube analytics, which is for, for me and Justin, that'd be YouTube studio on YouTube studio. I noticed that and it can tell it tells you like where you're getting the bulk of your shares from and for me it's Facebook and Instagram. I don't know why it says Instagram but cuz I don't really think you can share something from Instagram but Facebook gets the bulk of it and TikTok gets the remainder. I noticed when the Facebook shares drop, the views drop. I don't know why but that's just what the analytics are saying. So basically if you guys see a clip that I post on Facebook, if you see a like the link share it bro even if you don't watch it if even if you don't watch it but you support I, this channel really needs it we're a small channel you know we're doing a lot at the moment on regards of like pushing our content out to people but the the, the good chunk of us getting out there more is going to be from the sharing and it's the view per average the average view per like so like if you if, let's say you click on this podcast right and you watch nine minutes straight that helps the algorithm it shows YouTube that, hey, someone watched this for like nine minutes straight. That's good. They're going to push it onto other people's uh, pages when they're scrolling through YouTube that aren't subscribed. And maybe they click on it. So we kind of like need that. So if you guys at the moment, like everything's here is free, you know, and I, I like it that way. So if you guys would support in that way, sharing the links is the best way to go. Like on God, it's the best way to do it. I don't know why YouTube did like before that wasn't a big thing for YouTube, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Like YouTube, it used to be likes and uh, like the duration of the video, right? But now it's basically what if a viewer watches, it depends on how much of the viewer watches and if they share it, right? Or they comment too. Comments is a good thing. No, it's basically just engagement in general. Yeah. Likes, comments, and watch time. Yeah. So watch time is a big one, which... I've been getting really good watch time the last two months. It's like uh, it floats between like eight and 11. That's good, bro. In my opinion, that's good because some episodes are like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So that's good. But the views have been dropping. I don't know why. I personally think the, a lot a, a big reason, Dustin, was when you were saying they're like cussing in the title, me flipping off the camera on that thumbnail. Like that was probably one that wasn't, you know. That one probably didn't do me really good. Some people on Facebook were saying like, hey, if you share the YouTube link on your clip, Facebook's going to like, like shadow ban it basically, where it won't show up on people's feeds, which sucks. Because I was used to my Facebook video clips getting like hundreds of views and like up to like 400, 300 views, bro. Now it like barely reaches like 20 or 30. So I'm not sure if it's like the 
the topics I'm talking about or it's me in general, but I would like to find out soon so I can I can rework some things. So yeah, um off that. So certified lover boy comes out tonight. For us, it's gonna you said it comes out at 9 p.m., which I'm I'm so excited by the way. So pumped. Donda already came out earlier this week. Um, and and Kanye did this whole like it's gonna come out this day, no, this day, oh, this day, and then it was rumored to come out September 5th, and then I personally believe that Kanye dropped that album because Drake said he was dropping Certified Lover Boy on the third. That's just my opinion. I think Kanye knew it would eat sales, which if you're a hip hop fan in general, bro, like you, you're going to listen to both. You're going to listen to both because you know, they're both kind of beef and you know, they both have problems with each other. They're both trying to gun for the top spot right now. So you would listen to both. I would. I know there's certain people that wouldn't, wouldn't. But Kanye, I feel like Kanye definitely dropped the album early because of Drake going on ESPN and like, you know, that little, the interrupt this program. And he said Certified Lover Boy was coming out on the third. So I heard the the Donda album and you guys know, I, I, me, I don't know about you, Dustin, So if you want to chime in, you can. I, I hate Kanye, bro. I don't like him. I don't think he's the fucking genius everybody claims he is. I don't like, you know, everybody's like, he's a genius, you know? I don't, I'm not on that train. Like, I don't, I don't think that actually. And so this video is probably going to get disliked for that. And I don't care. I'm just saying my opinion. And you know what I mean? There's people out there who literally discredit everything Drake does because he's soft, because he talks about women. But they'll turn around and say LL Cool J is one of the best rappers ever. But didn't LL Cool J do that, if I'm not mistaken? Didn't LL Cool J make songs for bitches? He makes songs for bitches. That's what I'm saying, bro. People, like, and this goes to Warren and anybody, especially my guy Warren, bro. Because they'll sit there and they'll trash. He's soft, bro. <laughs> like, oh, this guy, he's soft, dog. But, like, they'll turn around and tell you that LL Cool J is a, be a better rapper. You know? Like, you can't, like, so, at the end of the day, it's not like Kanye's hard. You know when they say Drake's soft? Bro, Kanye's softer. Kanye had a bulletproof vest on last year when he was running for president, crying. He was crying on stage about, oh, my mom, oh, my mom didn't abort me. Like, bro, that is some soft ass shit. If you ask me the truth, you know, he was talking about how he almost he wanted to abort North. Yeah, I, I remember that part like too. That. Like, yeah. And, and like, and then he said, and yeah, they ended up not doing it. At the end of the day, I did listen to Donda and it was a, it, to me, it was a solid album. It was decent. It was the first Kanye album in a minute where I was like, oh, okay, I like this. This is cool. This is good. Obviously, um, I like Gel part one. Jay-Z's verse was good on that. Uh, so the beats on this album were amazing. The beats were amazing. I'm not going to... That's always Kanye's bread and butter. He's a good producer, bro. He's one of the best producers in, in hip-hop that has ever existed. He's one of the best producers. He's a genius marketer, too. This guy's a genius marketer. But to say he's like... You know, when people are like, he's a the genius artist of all time and he's the go like okay slow down bro slow down a lot of people soldier boy chris brown a lot of people were mad i guess because they apparently felt like he screwed them over on features but chris brown was on the album wasn't he yeah so you had mentioned yesterday that chris brown he took out chris brown's rapping part i don't know i'm saying he's on he's on the album so he clearly didn't get cut and if he did get cut, he probably had a rapping verse and they just took it off. Well, Soldier Boy was on the album, right? Like no. Soldier Boy was, he was supposed to be, but yeah. they cut him. Okay. So that was like the only real cut, right? That you can, that they, you heard about. I mean, yeah. because like, I'm sure there's probably a bunch of people that got cut. There was rumors that like Jay-Z's part was going to get cut. K. Cuddy's song was going to get cut. The baby wasn't like his, the little baby stuff wasn't going to get cleared. The baby's stuff wasn't going to get cleared. No, so. so for the jail thing. They thought Jay Z got cut because during his third listening party, there was the baby of Marilyn Manson on jail. But turns out that was just part two. So people thought that they were, he just scrapped part, you know, the Jay Z version, but he just made a part two of that song. Yeah. 
Okay, that makes sense. So Joe Part 1, loved. Joe Part 2, I loved. The baby, bro, he went hella hard on that verse. Like, that was a good the baby verse, bro. Um, I love No Child Left Behind. And the reason being is the beat, obviously, right? So that beat, you play that beat, bro, and just imagine you're in Game 7 of the Finals in your locker room. And you're trying to hype your team up, bro. Like, yeah, then you can't look at me and say that that's not a good beat. That's a great beat. Moon. Moon was good. Uh, I love Kid Cudi's part. And I usually don't like Kid Cudi. I know people are going to be like, you don't like Kid Cudi? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't really fuck with that camp, dog. I'm just... And you guys know that already. So the fact that I'm giving this album a good review is like, bro, that's that should be good. That's a good sign. Because I don't like any of those people. Sorry, I'm not into like, like when rappers try to make everything too artsy. You know, like I'm just, I'm ahead of my time because I wear dresses. <laughs> yeah? Is that, you know what I mean, Listen, Come on, bro. You may not agree with me, but like, that's what it is. These guys wear a dress and now they're ahead of their time. They paint their nails pink and now they're ahead of their time. No, bro. That's not what it is, actually. Sorry. Now that you mentioned that, that is kind of that whole camp. Yeah, that whole camp does that. Like, like Kanye, Kanye, all that, like, I, Kanye makes, like, a horrible pair of shoes. I'm the Walt Disney of our time. No, Pusha you're not, T, Kanye. Big Sean, they're all kind of, like, the I'm bigger than music art yeah. type of artist. When, like, Drake literally shits on their entire camp. Sorry. Drake literally does shit on that entire camp. And then, the so one of the things that annoys me is that people say that Drake doesn't rap. He's not an MC, bro. Drake's not an MC. Okay, Drake, okay, this is why I like Drake, because he can be an MC. He, Drake can rap. He chooses to do other forms of music because it's fun. It gets more fans to listen, and you're not stuck in this box where you're like this, like, cat in the hat with the bat in the hat and the motherfucker black. Now, you know, like you're, not, you're not stuck to this, like, 90s, like, beatboxing outside, like, yo, I got lyrics for days. Yo, my girl should have stayed. Like, you know, like, it's... That I Drake can weave in and out of that stuff, bro. Most people are mad because like Drake just be fucking your moms, he be fucking your sisters, your girlfriends, and he can still out rap you. Imagine being able to still out rap you and fuck your mom, dog. I would not like Drake either. Most of the time, you know what's funny? And Warren, Warren, you can deny this because I know Warren's going to deny this, and it's true. Warren will tell me that Drake's trash or Drake can't rap. And then when I send Warren a list, a whole list of songs where Drake is rapping, Drake is trash. Did you listen to any, like, you know what I mean? They won't listen to the list, Justin. I'll send them the list. Drake, Drake, Drake a square, dog. Drake a light skin square. You, so you didn't listen to the album. You didn't listen to any of the songs I sent you. You didn't listen to anything that would kind of like, okay, change your mind a little bit. You hate Drake so bad. You know why I think what's happening in the industry is funny with like Kanye, Drake, and Pusha and all them? Because in real life, dog, in real life, people do that. In real life, I've had real friends act out of character because they don't like Drake. Real life friends who were tagging me in posts on Facebook. Like, bro, and when I say tagging cough cough i'm talking about like 10 tags they're tagging me in hello post they're messaging me at like six in the morning three in the morning about drake you're messaging me about a grown man at three in the morning calling me a fanboy i'm a fanboy right but you're messaging me about a grown man at three in the morning pause there's no other way to explain it pause I have real friends who are getting out of character and getting personal with me. Drew, you work in electronics. Drew, you don't have friends. Your brother's the only person you talk to. Drew, you're almost 30 and don't have a career. So you get the correlation, bro. Drake gets people who are not only industry people, but people you are like friends with. He'll get people who you're supposed to be friends with you to get out of character and start like dissing you for Drake. But then they'll call you a fanboy when they're the ones at three in the fucking morning 
messaging you about how Drake's soft and Drake's a square. I'm noticing that trend is happening a lot in the industry. I notice it's happening a lot, actually. Kanye, all of them, bro. He, they're, he, they're posting his address. I know people know where he lives, technically, doesn't, but he's posting his address. Kanye's posting billboards in Toronto. You guys call me a fanboy. But is that not some weirdo fucking fanboy shit? I know you guys are going to get on here and go, but, but Kanye's the Walmart of our generation. He's the Disney. <laughs> He's Picasso. <laughs> imagine calling Kanye Picasso. Bro, imagine calling Kanye the Disney of our era and then calling me a fanboy. Do I ever say stuff about Drake like that, son? Have I ever said Drake's the Disney of our generation? No, no bro. I've never said that. And in fact, the only thing that I've... And I'm, I don't like everything Drake's done. You know why? Because that cover album that's supposed to be for Certified Lover Boy, and I'll put it right here, the emoji stuff, it's trash. It's absolute unequivocal trash. He had a real artist named, is, is it Damien or Damon? Damon Hurst? Is it Damien Hurst or Damon Hurst? I don't know. I think it's Damien. Let's say it's Damien Hurst, whatever. It's an artist with the last name Hurst. Bro, this guy, Drake commissioned him apparently to make this art, this cover. You must have paid this guy a buttload of money to make this fucking trash, Drake. I've been tweeting Drake and I've been like, and I know Drake's not going to see it, but I've been Instagramming him too. Drake, you still have time, bro. This video will be out by the time Certified Lover Boy comes out. Oh no, sorry. This video will be out, sorry, after Certified Lover Boy comes out. So I'll do a review of the album next week. But bro, what? You have time. Make your cover art Kim. Bro, it should be Kim Kardashian. Why not? You know how mad Kanye would be? If you made the cover to your album Kim. Yeah, bro, I'm a certified lover boy. I fucked your wife, dog. And I fucked her sisters. So I'm part of the family now. Hey, Kanye's kids, it's Uncle Drake. I'm coming over again like I did the times when your dad wasn't here. That's... That's actually my personal theory on why Drake didn't release that diss track after the story of added on. That's my personal theory. I believe fully to this day that that diss track that Jay Prince didn't let him release, he was going to say he fucked him. He was going to say, I fucked Kim. I fucked all of her sisters. I fucked Kris Jenner. I, I even fucked Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> what are you going to do, Kanye? What are you going to do, bro? The ball's in your court. You, what, what would have Kanye done? What the fuck is Kanye going to do? Hey, Kanye, I fucked your wife, dog. I slid in her pussy hole. What are you going to do? That's my personal theory. <laughs> is that what I said? <laughs> yeah, what is Kanye going to do? You're going you're gonna to beef over me fucking your wife? I, had a, I have a friend of mine. Her name's Bree. And she talks about... she. Her theory was is that... That is that Kanye is asexual and views everything like art, views people like art. So Kim was allowed to fuck people on the side, right? Which makes sense because didn't Kanye say that Kim fucked Meek Mill or he alluded to her fucking Meek Mill? Yeah. Why would he say that if Kim wasn't able to fuck people on the side? Him being asexual and like them having problem with having kids with like, you know, the surrogate mother thing, which is no one's business, by the way. It is no one's business, but it's funny when we bring up the Meek Mill thing and then you say, oh, maybe Drake was one of the people she fucked and Kanye got mad. Like, you fucked Drake? What? Maybe that's what started this whole thing. Because Drake even said in that Rap Radar video, in the interview with Rap Radar, he was saying that like, hey, all this wasn't me. I didn't start this. Every problem that's with this situation is from their side. Now I'm starting to think maybe Drake did fuck him, bro. Make her the make her the cover. Make her the cover to certify Love a Boy, and I will buy it, Drake. I'll buy a copy for me, my little brothers, my mom. My mom says she already heard it, apparently, you know, when she does the I already heard it already. No, mom, you didn't. So but yeah. Back to Donda. Okay. So Donda, I give the album a solid review, bro. It's it's not bad. The uh, off the grid, but I liked off the grid. 
I actually liked Off the Grid. I said Off the Grid, whatever. Off the Grid, but I liked it. I'm trying to think of uh, the other ones. I had a list, bro. I had a list. Gel Part 1, Part 2, No Child Left Behind, Moon, Off the Grid. It didn't give the name of the features when I was listening. So there, there was one with a... Uh, do you have it on your on your phone? Do you have them? No, I have the the songs and the features though. Yeah, but you uh name off a couple. So yeah, why he's finding the list? It's not it's not that I I did give this album a fair review. I wasted two hours of my life listening to the shit. So that's how you know I was trying to be unbiased as possible. A hurricane featuring the weekend. A little yeah, baby. hurricane. Yep, that was a good one. I like that one. Praise God featuring Dr. Donda West, Travis Scott, and Baby Keem. That one was okay. I didn't I didn't hate it, no. Jonah featuring Vori and Lil Durk. I okay. thought Lil Durk did okay on that. Okay, okay featuring Lil Yachty and Ruga. Yeah, I'll, that was a good one. I like the one with Lil, Lil Yachty. Believe What I Say featuring Miss Lauren Hill and Buju Bayon. Yeah, I like that one. The one with Lauren Hill. That, that gave me really old Kanye vibes. Like, you, you know, like mm. college dropout type vibes. Remote Control featuring Young Thug and I don't even know how you say that. I didn't. I'm I didn't, not even gonna try. I didn't think that one was bad at all. So see, I'm giving like every song you're naming. I've I've heard them. Yeah, they're not bad, bro. Like that, you know, it was a uh, solid project. Moon featuring Don Tolliver and Kid Cudi. Yep, that was a good one. Jesus Lord featuring Jay Electronica. Swiss yeah, Beats Jesus Lord Larry was Hoover good, Jr. bro. He had Larry Hoover Jr. in a song. Huh? Yeah, wasn't Lord Jesus Part Two the one that's like 11 minute song? Yeah. Yeah, that one was a good one too. I thought. And is Jada Kiss on there? It has Jay Electronica, Sheik Louch, Jada Kiss, Styles P, Swiss Beats, and Larry Hoover Jr. Yeah, yeah, that that one was uh, for eleven minutes, bro. I thought they they killed it. So, um, did you listen to the album yet? No, I've only heard like a couple of songs. Okay, so you wouldn't be able to give like a okay. So that's the point. The point is, I still think even though I think Kanye's album was good, I still think Certified Level Boy is gonna be better. That's just my early opinions out the gate. I still think it's going to outsell Kanye and outbeat Kanye. Now, does that make Kanye's album bad? No, it doesn't. But I know what everybody's going to say. I'm a fanboy, even though you're messaging me at three in the morning and tagging me and getting out of character with me personally. I'm the fanboy. I just wanted to bring that up because it's fun. It's fucking funny. It's fucking funny to see people, you know what I mean? But yeah. And besides that, the cover Drake is it's 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 horrible. It's horrible. Shit's ass, dog. No if ands or buts. That shit is ass. That's the first thing Drake's ever really done. Where I'm like, okay, no. Someone in his circle say no, please. But yeah. Next week when it comes out, oh, when it comes out tonight, I'll give my review next week. Hopefully, I can have someone on next week. We we debate it. You know, probably have Warren come back and body him real quick. <laughs> little quick body on one, you know what I mean? This guy, this guy got a new house, and he, so he apparently he thinks he's better than everybody. So I'm gonna have to fucking body him for real, for real. I'm not joking. But yeah, I want to end off tonight with um, Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley, bro. Did you see that fight? You did, right? Yeah, you I watched did. it. Yeah, I watched it too. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna say I watched it for free, but you know, <laughs> for legal purposes, I paid for it. You know what I mean? But yeah, but yeah, but uh, I think that fight has some big big things going forward and by that i mean you kind of have to take jake paul serious now you kind of have to there is no like oh he's the disney kid he's the youtube kid yeah he still is those two things but bro he can fight he proved it that night anybody saying it's rigged bro you clearly don't watch boxing you clearly don't know about boxing because it's a point-based system so Tyron hits him one time and he falls to the ropes. It's rigged, bro. He should have won. No, he won that round. Okay. But he didn't win the other rounds. So out of the eight rounds, I scored Jake winning six. And I think Tyron won four and five. That's how I scored it. I think Tyron won four and I five. A, I don't know. I don't remember five. Because I know four is when he got the knockdown. Well, it should have been called a knockdown. He got that round and the last one for sure. So if you say you got four or five, I say you got four, five, and eight. So you got at least three of them. Yeah. So out of the eight, you you scored at Jake five, him three. Okay. Yeah. So you saw Jake winning. No, for sure. Yeah. So I think you, that he won round four because he had the knockdown. But people take that and just say he won the fight. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people on Facebook are doing. It's rigged. Yeah. The white boy lost, bro. He lost that round. Lost that round. He didn't yeah. lose the fight because that's not how boxing is, bro. 
So let's be real about that. But Jake, Jake is a master entertainer. He's a master show. Like he knows how to sell tickets, bro. He knows how to get people interested. He knows how to get people talking. Boxing needs that. Boxing needs this. It's a dying sport, bro. Whether you like to admit it or not, boxing is a dying sport. That's why the UFC has done so good over the past decade compared to boxing. UFC has people who can sell tickets, who can sell a fight, who want you get interested. Like when Connor was at his prime, Connor was talking that shit and backing it up. And that's what we wanted to see. I'm not saying Jake is the Connor of boxing, but it's starting to look like that, bro. He has like that 6 9 thing too where they just talk hella shit. They know how to get hella people interested. They know how to get people to watch. And when they watch, they they put on, bro. Like that's kind of like what Connor did. But people are now saying that, oh, it's rigged. And, and bro, Tyron was so cringy at the end when he said, oh, I want a rematch. You already promised to get the tattoo regardless of the rematch, right? The, whoever lost had to get the tattoo. You already, you should already get the tattoo regardless of the rematch. But now he made it to where I'll only do the rematch if you get the tattoo. And it has to say, I love Jake Paul. And Tyron's like, bet. You can't do that, bro. The bag was that good. The bag was that good to where you were going to get, I love Jake Paul. That's an L. You're ruining your legacy to, to, to fight Jake Paul again. Cause your legacy's gonna be you you did the rematch and you got a tattoo of a grown of another grown man on you to get the rematch for money. Pause. It's pause, dude. Logan's like, you're washed up, man. Remember Logan at that post interview? You old news, man. You're like Logan, bro, shut up. Like Logan too. Like they know how to sell. They know what it takes, bro. It is what it is. I wanna see Jake next. He has a hit list, right? Obviously, Canelo is going to fucking wash him if they fight. So th that's not happening until like later, later. I don't even think it will. But Can C Canelo knows like, bro, that's going to be my biggest payday is fighting Jake Paul. And why not? You get to go in the ring and whoop some kid. You get to go fucking whoop his ass to get the biggest bag you're ever going to get. That's what Jake's bringing to the game now. Everybody who's fighting him, they're getting their biggest bag ever. That's why Dana White and them are hella about her, in my opinion. And I like Dana White in the UFC. I love the UFC. But Dana always brings up like, oh, Jake says we don't pay our fighters enough. Well, I mean, you kind of don't, bro, compared to what they're paying them. You know, and like, I guess apparently if the UFC still has rights to you, it, Dana White can, is the only one that, that can allow you to fight. So if Connor wants to fight Jake Paul, but Dana says no, Connor can't fight unless Connor breaks his contract. And maybe they're paying him just to like promote. I don't know what they're doing, but that's a big thing, dude. It's a big thing because Nate Diaz called him out on Twitter, I believe. And I think Nate Diaz is Nick and Nate Diaz are on Jake Paul's list to fight. I believe Canelo is. I know KSI is again or KYS. I forgot. I don't keep up with that shit. Logan Paul's at the end of his list. So he's planning on boxing his brother in some time. That'd be a big one to end off with. Who knows? Did you see any of like the the rest of them? To the event or did you just watch the Woodley? No, I just watched that one. So I watched uh the female fight. Serrano did amazing. And I didn't I I kind of knew about her going into this a little bit, but I'm glad Jake made that the co made event. Cause see, Jake's doing things that people don't do. Hey, I'm gonna put the female fight as the co made event because I want to give the girls their own their own spotlight. They deserve it. They work hard too. They get, that's cool as fuck. And people aren't giving that credit. You don't ever see that in any other sport besides maybe the NBA. Like, you don't see them like, like, hey, bro, these girls are hella good. I'm going to give them the coming of it. And Jake had enough power to do that, man. So, but I, I would love to see Jake versus Connor, bro. Because Connor, let's be real. You're not going to want to use your legs anytime soon. Okay. So let's get Jake and Connor, bro. Let's get them in a, would you want to see that, dude? Jake versus Connor McGregor, dude. I would, just because you know that they would sell the fuck out of that fight. Yeah, and you know the trash talk would be legendary, dude. But the fight itself, probably not. I didn't even think Jake Paul looked that great, to be honest with you. And he's supposed to be, like, the better fighter between him and Logan. Yeah, Jake... So, what I noticed in the fight was the first, like, three rounds, Jake was doing good. But Jake has never had a fight go past round two. 
right? Wasn't it like round two? I think it was round one or some shit like that. So he's never had a fight go that long. So you could tell after round three, he started to get gassed more. You could tell that he wasn't prepared to even go into later rounds. So Jake needs to work on that. If you're going to be a real boxer, you have to be prepared to go the full rounds, bro. You have to, or you're going to get gassed out early and it's not going to look good for you. Once like round four and on, Jake didn't really look that good either, but he won most of the rounds after that. Ty Tyron barely looked like he was gassed at all. Like he barely looked like he was sweating. Like, so he was good on that part, but yeah, definitely Jake needs to work on that if he's going to fight real boxers, bro, because they're trained to do that. This isn't like, oh, I'm just going to go in and knock him out real quick. No, bro, like you are doing this for a reason. But yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I had a, I had fun. had a blast. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, please let us know what you would want from this channel going forward. I'm open to criticism. I'm open to all that. I love I love coming here every week and uh, putting on entertainment. So, yeah. Until next time, guys. Peace.